There's a lot more than eight. Maybe they had mm -hmm. second thoughts after their dinner plans. I bet that was the whole Megillah. The Badens and the guards. Do you know if the governor's got any ice pack? I don't know. Check the freezer. Where's Billy anyway? <laughs> ice pack. In the breach, I almost lost a hand. I like my hand, all right? That big skinhead, Russell. That was fast for a size. Built like goddamn Paul Bunyan. What's the exact number on the Badens and the guards? I'm thinking 24 total, a whole bunch. Yeah, it can be everybody. Sure as shit looked like it. I got two Badens and a guard. Dose as well, uh, minus a guard. I got three. Two guards. Two for me. And a guard. Seven Badens and four guards. 24 exactly. Tomorrow's headline. Massacred Baden Hall. Yeah, then five Morins found dead in a house fire. Or maybe a trash go back there. If we're lucky. I mean, the Badens might have been cross-burning clansmen, but this is bad for business. And the big old families are gonna want some heads to look at, preferably detached. That's not gonna happen. There's no evidence. There's no reason to find us. And guess what? If the hammer ever came down, no one's touching a hair on your fucking heads. Because my family's got our back. You have my undying, unwavering fucking word. The Morellos are with us. Jackson, contents on the table. Here we go. No matter how big or how loud of an impact, there's no evidence. We are non-existent. We're ghosts, as far as anyone's concerned. And now, more importantly, now we got it back. Well, thank you, Mr. Fucking Theatrics. Where have you been? I've been changing. And I've been listening to five young, talented individuals who I care about sit around and complain like a bunch of spoiled little brats. You know, I gotta say, I expected happier faces. Did you hear the feed? Did you hear the curveball? The fact that there were a little too many on the dance card. Fog of war, confusion, that's what you guys train for. Point is, it wasn't supposed to be a battlefield. They were a bit more unpredictable than we thought. I don't mind killing clan members, but I do mind surprises, and that was a bad one. I know, and we'll try to find answers. But what's bickering gonna solve this late in the game? If you wanna complain, why don't you save it for when you're chatting up some supermodel on a sunny island? Onward and upward. Big Gus is gonna pick you rascals up at 4.30 a.m., so gives us some time for some celebrating. Just don't spoil your appetite before the desserts. Help yourself to the bar, and if you want to smoke, feel free, as Mr. Barris is about to, but uh, try to take it outside in the back. <clears throat> um, by the way, the television here is busted, so like, do you have another one I can just replace it with? Like, one in another bedroom or something? Uh, no, I don't have another one. Okay, so like, just one in each bedroom then? <laughs> no, I don't have another working television in the house, it's mostly just filler. How do you watch movies or television? I don't really watch television. When I'm here, I'm usually with a woman, so, you know. Uh, is he serious? No TV? All right, which room do I change in? I'll show you all right now. And when you're done, I've got a little toast for you. Damn it, Hector. Can you ever wear a low-key suit? You know, a little less effort? Less effort? I can assure you this is actually effortless. Looking the way I do is not as difficult as one would think. You just need to eat healthy, keep in shape. But to be honest, most of it could be genetics. Yeah, at least this was hot coffee. <sighs> Why? Someone throw it in your face for that stupid answer. <laughs> You know by now I don't talk fashion with a man who barely wears shoes and 
cuts his own hair. Yeah, you only know that because I told you. People probably think it's a salon cut or something. I'm sure they don't, but I'll agree with you anyway. So what's it gonna be tonight? Snake skin, ostrich? Uh -uh. Egyptian crocodile. Hmm, I got two pairs actually. I'm sure you do. I don't know why you gotta have so many fucking pairs of shoes, man. Well, variety, the spice of life. And woman love, man with a certain original style, certain flair. Whatever works for you, I guess. Gracias. Hey, salud. That's good stuff, real classy, fancy pants hooch, as some would say. Yeah, who says this, Billy? No, oh, it's a, more of an expression, I guess. Okay. Hey, Maddox, <laughs> look at Hector's snazzy shoes. He's a runway model now. <laughs> Those shoes should come with a tuba lipstick and a vibrator. <laughs> Those are lady shoes. Uh, very comical, very hilarious, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Those shoes are like, uh, they, uh, when you get them, uh, they, uh, Gather around, you fire-breathing bastards. Please, take your glasses. Patrice, Victoria, Maddox, Hector, Jackson. I've known all of you since you were pups. Even before I took the good office, back in the dreary mayoral days. You know, I've been alive 56 years. Been in the state for most of them, and take it from me. Rhode Island is full of losers. Most of them are bandits, or maniacs, or chumps. It's like what Clint Eastwood said in Magnum Force. A man's got to know his limitations. And I like to think that I'm finally starting to learn mine. You know, I've had the pleasure of toasting you bastards six times. Well, I gotta say, on this seventh toast, I'm sorry, I don't have any inspirational stories or business savvy advice. All I can tell you is that I am proud of you. I spent 56 years trying to get my little slice of heaven, the freedom to do what I want to do, and guess what? You all did it before you even turned 30. So what's next for you fire breathers? Sky's the limit. Let me tell you something that my granddad told me. Don't approach a bull from the front. Don't approach a horse from the rear. Don't approach a fool from any direction. I'm guessing that's a family motto? No, no, just something to consider. So just shut my mouth, sit on my hands, and wait for the rat out. I can't tell you what to do. No, that's what you're doing. Jackson, 24 clansmen, beatings and guards. You don't think that number was predetermined? I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet, but... Look, if you're right... <laughs> I don't really see the angle, but... If you're right, somebody got two birds with one big stone. I damn near lost a hand. And that doesn't bother you? Well, of course it bothers me, but... I ain't got nobody to blame. The information that we run on, it ain't exactly the uh, word of God. It was unseen, it was unexpected. We don't know why they weren't at that wedding, but uh, they got a reputation for being a bit unpredictable. And if it's not just an error, if it wasn't just some unexpected hazard, This is a very, uh, let me say it, uh, look over your shoulder type of business. 
there are two kinds of people in it. One is the kind that don't get in the way. Two, they kind of get decapitated. You dig it? Well, I don't plan on being a roadblock. I sure hope so. But I don't know. Word of advice. Tone it down. Keep your eyes open. some dance moves. Let's move! What? What the fuck? Out there? Yeah, outside. A guy with a fucking badge just pulled up in a blue car. Looks like he's carrying a fucking pastry box. Oh, fuck. He's a friend. A fucking detective. He comes by on Thursdays and drops shit off from his girlfriend's baby. But I don't know what the fuck he's doing here now. Fucking asshole. Get rid of him. No, no, no. We'll handle this, okay? Everyone with a rap sheet or a familiar face, please find an appropriate hiding spot so we can weather this quick storm. The governor and I will deal with it. Yeah? Do you have any cigars? Dan! Dan the man! How you doing, you young son of a bitch? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, sorry for coming through unannounced. I was just driving by and figured I'd drop you off a little surprise from Becca. Oh, well that's always a welcome surprise. Look at this, a tiramisu, don't strike that. A stunning, beautiful tiramisu. Thank you, Daniel. And tell Rebecca I said thank you. I'll have to stop by the shop tomorrow. I'm, I'm sure she'd appreciate that. Daniel, I'm a terrible host. No drinks or introductions. This is my good old friend, Diego De La Vega. Diego, this is Danny Martin, a very funny individual. The penchant for bourbon. Pleasure to meet you, Daniel. Very professional tiramisu. My compliment. Dan's girlfriend owns that bakery about six blocks down. Marlowe's Cafe. Oh, perfect. Well, it looks very talented. So, how the two of you know each other? Oh, uh, Billy used to come out drinking with the boys. <laughs> Guy's a real booze hound. Got that Irish blood in him. I can't keep up with the youngsters. Daniel, please, have a seat. Don't stand on my account. Yeah. Where are my fucking manners? Let me pour you bourbon and don't say you can't. Oh, no, 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 I, I most definitely can. A quick one, at least. Yeah, they got me on shit hours, because I got a little rough on the north side of town. And to top it off, I thought I lost one of my bags, but uh, <laughs> your uh, friend, he won't mind if I partake. I mean, as long as I'm not interrupting. Oh, no, no, not at all. <laughs> Billy and I, we were discussing the idea of retirement, or just retiring early, you know. What do you do? Where do you live? Oh. So on and so forth. Oh. Europeans work to live, and Americans live to work. It's because most of the older guys die when they got nothing left to do. They don't have a purpose anymore. No, I think they die because they've been overworked and they have bad diets. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. And don't Europeans live longer too? Precisely. Stop and smell the roses. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can still go on adventures. We'll cover some golden statues, maybe. Uh, 
know me too well. A leopard can't change his spots. What about you, Daniel? What do you think about exploring? Maybe some uh, archaeology, find some lost treasure. You know, uh, I do like that topic, but uh, I gotta take a piss before we start delving into treasure hunting. Well, the one down here is busted. Uh, use mine upstairs. Just got the whole thing remodeled. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you. Uh, no, no, no. Good kid. Mickey Turner is blushing the bride-to-be Samantha Gallo. Proverbial Romeo and Juliet of Providence. Except the whole suicide thing. Star-crossed lovers, real morons. But they're bringing the Gallows and Turners together. So it's going to be the biggest party of the year. And I mean big. All of the families are going to be yeah, there. It's going to be a swanky three-day affair on the beautiful island of Martha's Vineyard, about 40 miles off our coast. But since we're all going to be on the mainland for this little shindig, you can leave your tuxedos at home. The RSVP list confirms the Baden gang, all 16 of them for attendance, on Saturday and Sunday, leaving the ancestral Baden Hall under the guard of their famed security team. But that's not thugs or military mercs. That's eight foaming at the mouth clansmen. It's better than the whole gang. Uh, yeah. Um, speaking of the Badens, the Nazi-loving knights of the Klan, is it like, is it like good luck inviting clan members to a wedding? This is some kind of like awesome tradition I just haven't heard about. Well, sadly, business is business, and the Badens bring home the bacon. It'd be insulting for the Gallus and the Turners not to invite them. Nash Yacht Club off Narragansett Boulevard. Reservations made by Wallace Baden for a table of 16. Charter their yacht for crossing Martha's Vineyard on the same date. Can you confirm if the leads are genuine? The yacht club is from a hostess named Helene. 
I have her give me reservation lists each month. She thinks I'm trying to schmooze the zoning board for a couple of building projects I got coming along. What about the RSVP list? The list is from the wedding planner. I had my secretary get it to see if my ex-wife was going. They were very accommodating. Any of the Morales going to this fancy pants wedding? Uh, just my mom and dad. But I doubt they'll stay long. Too many old money blue bloods, like Billy here. So, wedding night, all the rich folks and the big bad babies on Martha's Vineyard. And little old us hanging out in Providence while the cats are away. All right, hope you guys got the energy, because we're running through it again from the top. Detective Daniel Martin. Providence PD for six years. And if I'm not mistaken, you're one of those dirty detectives implicated in the Northside killings. Saw that on the news. And they didn't even suspend you. <laughs> well, before we proceed, I'm gonna need to ask you for some of that famous police restraint. Do you think you can do that for me? <clears throat> Just a nod. I like that, but I need to hear you tell me. So go on and say, I'm a cool customer. <coughs> Say that. I'm, I'm a cool customer. <laughs> All right. Let's get this started. <laughs> My name is Patrice Cooper. You can call me Patrice, Mr. Cooper, or whatever makes you feel better. Now, we argued for a while, but curiosity led us to this conversation because, well, you see, on this night, of all nights, <laughs> there's our little situation, and then cut to a surprise visitor. <sighs> so questioning you might be a blessing in disguise to quell any fears, but before you sit there and tell me fairy tales, I should explain. You live at 1134 Stallworth Drive, Cranston, Rhode Island. Keep cool while I cut to the chase. Now, it's not hard to estimate that you got family, friends waiting on you who might just be as despicable as yourself. And they would hate to see us come to visit instead of you. Now you don't want that. You don't want us to go to your house and eat your dinner, watch your TV, sit back and your furniture and blah, 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 scary, threatening shit. You get the picture? Good. We are compliant. You may proceed. I'm Victoria Apollonia Morello of the Morello family. You know of me? Yes. I would like to know which syndicate you work for. 
I don't work for any gang of business. I wouldn't lie to a Morello. I swear to Christ, I was just bringing Billy a fucking tiramisu. My girlfriend, she, uh, she owns the bakery six blocks down. Yeah, we know. Governor told us. Cakes and such? Yeah, you do that every now and again, right? Always on Thursdays. You bring a pie or a cake and you have a drink and a chat. And then you leave. <laughs> Beware of Greeks bearing gifts. See, is it, is it you Visiting tonight, is that a coincidence? Hmm? I don't know, but what I do know is um, you used your flashlight. Why would you go and do a thing like that? You bring a man a pie, you, you drink his bourbon and then you snoop around his house? Mrs. Morello. <laughs> I can explain all this, okay? And, and I, I can honestly tell you right now, I had no bad intentions. Just curiosity, that's it. <clears throat> Do you know what kind of business the governor's in? No. Just know about the prostitutes. I mean, I go to a couple of massage parlors. with the girl. And Billy had to talk to me. But that's all. That is it. I swear to God. All right. All right. Well, that's enough talking from you. You know what I mean, <laughs> Jelly Bean? <laughs> what do you think, Patrice? I don't know. Could be a dummy uncle sucking up to the governor. Maybe sniffing around for a taste of something. But like we said before, at all the times to stop by, and at this hour, I don't know. My man is in curiosity and bad luck. If he knew anything, I doubt he'd be dumb enough to walk right into it. I'm not buying the whole dumb cop routine. We could be diamond information. Selling secrets to buy himself a nice in-ground pool. It could be, but it doesn't matter. He already saw too much when he walked in. We fucked up. Continue the job and move on. Agreed. Let's just do it now. That's my vote. No voting. Oh, shit. You should have told me that. I'm gonna go smoke. Yeah, good idea. Me too. Let me get this room for an hour, and I'll get us an answer. Straight from the horse's mouth. Rather get it over with and play it safe. It's too much time and worry and work. A pint of sweat saves a gallon of blood. That's General George S. Patton right there. We should know for sure, instead of waiting around and having doubts. He's got a plan. I mean, we're going to have to bag him anyways. Not much 30 minutes or an hour is going to change. OK. So I say when we're done, we disinfect and wrap him, and we take him with us to drop on our way out of state. Big Gus won't mind. But um, we are going to need some plastic drop cloths, some bags, tools, cleaners, and we're going to need tarps to package them. Well, everything's in the basement. Just bring up what you need. That's what I'm talking about. Now we're cooking with gas. No, 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 no. What's even better, in Uruguay, if you're ever caught in bed with another man's wife, he's got the right to kill both of you. <laughs> Completely legal. Ugh. Yeah, we'll fuck around. Totally don't. And in Japan, prostitution is illegal unless there's non-coital sex act. You know what non-coital means, right? Yeah, everything but the basic. That's what you call a loophole. Yeah, and you know, in Siena, Italy, it is illegal for a prostitute to be named Mary. What do you mean? It is illegal to be named Mary if you're a prostitute. <laughs> That's a pretty harsh rule. It's a religious hang up. The Virgin Mary, they don't want anyone to summer her and her, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what do they do if you get caught? I don't know, it's some kind of fine, I guess. Well, it's by any other name. Well, it's somewhat a religious part of an already religious country. We're in good times for decent, fun-loving people. That's what I call it. Mm. Mary, Mary. Oh, 
Well, Mary's not even a bad name. Hey, uh, you should ditch that car before somebody spots it. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Hello, stranger. Come on in. Um, I'm assuming you're with Detective Martin? Yeah. Yeah, sorry for intruding, you know. Hey, no apologies necessary. You'd have to forgive your friend. Him and the governor are just, uh, reminiscent. But this should be out for cigars in a moment or two. <laughs> yeah, that prick said he was gonna be 10 minutes tops. A lot longer than that. I might have to grab him as well. Mm. Yeah, I figured. Well, uh, I'm Bobby Lewis. Hi, Bobby Lewis. I'm Hector Torres. Yeah, nice to meet you. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go inside and make myself a drink real quick. Yes, please. Let's have a glass while you wait. This is a late shift. Perhaps the latest of shifts? Yeah, well, that was when you get in trouble, right? This was a loud mouse on the north side, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'll be out of it soon. You troublemaker. Hmm. In this city, I found that 10% of the police are decent enough. 5% are the real deal. And the remaining 85, they're sadistic bullies with inferiority complexes and most likely very small cocks. See, the majority of angry men are sexually unqualified. I'd say nine times out of ten, the angry personalities are just angry because they cannot satisfy their partner sexually. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I never thought of it like that. Well, you should. I'm sure there are countless examples how your place of work. Yeah, maybe. What do you do, Mr. Torres? Pew, 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 pew. No, I'm a competition shooter. Trick shots and sharp shooting, all, all that jazz. Yeah, that's cool, but <laughs> you can't make a lot of money doing that shit, though, right? Well, a bit here and there, but you get to see the world, beautiful people and places. But what's kept me here is this slightly more thrilling work. Yeah, what's that? Well, mostly working with this team of other very talented, very gifted gunslingers. And we're usually funded by the governor. He's a, yeah, he's a good sport. But well, anyway, um, we steal things. Very expensive things. <laughs> That's priceless. I'm kidding, Americano. Joder, tu madre. Tranquilo, tranquilo. You should have seen your expression. A very <laughs> perplexed detective. Yeah, you're, uh... You're a regular comedian, Mr. Torres. Mm. I don't know many funny Mexicans. From Spain, actually. <laughs> and gracias. Would you like another drink while we wait? Shit. Yeah. take the bottle if you offer. Venga, vámonos para allá. Puma. And, uh, I'm not about or about, uh, about yay high, uh, right? You know what I mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> See, I'm going to a bachelor party after this. Oh. Over at uh, Madame Jean's House of Sin. Love it. Guess what? What? I don't think those girls are ready. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> well, try it safe, but 
all the strange rules in this country. The laws. You know, I've always been more intrigued by the, um, by the bizarre ones. All over the globe, the strange rules. You know that in Paraguay, to duel is completely legal as long as both men are organ donors? As long as you guys keep a low profile, that's my only concern. All right, 40 minutes under two conditions. One, not a sound comes from this room, and I mean as quiet as a church mouse. And two, Patrice sits in on the talk. Oh, come on. He'll just mess it up or slow me down. <laughs> Go fast, please. Two conditions. My house, my rules. Come on, gentlemen, let's get it moving. Oh, it's fine. Fine, but it's my lead. If you're gonna... <clears throat> Excuse me, amigos. Just to keep us all abreast on the situation. What is it? We have a tango down. A what? Tumbed up, taken out, popped, smoked mm -hmm. eyes, done in, off to center of the farm. You shoot someone? Who'd you shoot? A detective named Bobby Lewis. What? From the window? No. We were in the kitchen. It was very clean. Wait. There was another one? Yeah. Looking for this one. There were two in the car, not one. Aha. Uh -huh. See, I told you we should detect earlier. God damn it. Show me. Well, I'll tell you right off the bat. You're cleaning it. Oh. No, no, no. Thank you. You know what? I've decided to stop doing favors for you. Full stop, starting right now. Actually, I think you're the bee's knees. Oh, I feel like Jackson's being sarcastic. So what do you guys think? Mm. I mean, there's nothing we can't fix. We'll just grab a tarp and uh, move him to the bedroom with his friend. Better not have wrecked the floor. We'll bag him, move him, wipe down the room. Well, thank you, Hector. Thank you very much. Pretty clean, though. Thank you. I used my 9mm low grain. That was very considerate. The rest of it should be somewhere in its lungs, just like a little tiny pail. No? Mm. So this, this one, he was just tagging along? Yeah, Martin left him waiting in the car. Yeah, it looks like 10 miles of bad road. You sure he's on the level? Mm, I don't know, to be honest. Doesn't count out his friend in the other room. OK. Everyone? Living room, five minutes. Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, I think it's a problem with the power cord. Hey, Bill, you got any electrical tape? Jackson, it's busted. You're not going to fix it. So sit down, pay attention. All right, compadres, here's where we're at. We're a few hours shy of pickup, and we got two good old boys that I'll be uh, <laughs> more than happy to get out of our hair. Way I see it, we all been having a little bit too much fun. I'm counting myself in on that one, it's true. Right, we've been having a good time, getting a little off track. Because the way I see it, we got uh, too many chiefs. Not enough Indians. So I'm Chief Geronimo, and you're the Apache tribe. From here on out, this reservation's gonna run tip top. So what that means is no more over-enthusiastic scalping. No further uh, buffalo hunting. Slow down on the fire water and keep the peace pipes out on the deck. Well said. That's a square deal. No more flying by the seat of our pants. Exactly. Once we get everything handled, we can all Hurry up and wait. <laughs> Until then, let's get it lined up. So first things first, Maddox, why don't you bring everything up from the basement and prepare that room to what you see fit? Hector, move Detective Lewis's body into the soon-to-be interrogation room. Once the body is moved, clean the area. Billy, sit back and relax. Patrice, Jackson, you're going to come with me, and we're going to figure out what to do with this buckaroo's car. Sounds enough like a plan to me. So, any questions? If it's about the TV, you can go ahead and put your hand down. All right, let's get started. 
All right, so where's everything located? Which closets and uh, do I need a key? No, no key. Uh, tarps and covers are in the first closet. Mm -hmm. Chemicals are in that big metal, I don't know, whatever you call it. And uh, I don't know, the rest of the stuff's easy to find. Uh, painter's gear and everything. All right, cool. I'll be right back. Hey, 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 can I ask you something? Girl calls six times, doesn't leave a message. What's the point there? Some people just don't like leaving messages. That's the thing, she usually does. Well, don't get worked up. It's probably nothing. Yeah, I hope so. What's her name? Haley. No, oh, that's a dumb girl's name. She's probably at a, at a party or a club or something. Maybe she wants you to join her. Yeah, I hope so. What'd she look like? Whoa. All right, well, you should, you should probably call her back. Uh, come on, come on, go. Okay, 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 all right, go. Jeez. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Tell us the good news. It's as good as it's going to get. Okay, cool. Break it down. No GPS, no tracker, and they kept their phones in the car. Check through those. No calls made within the time frame, so we are good to go. All right. So we drop it about eight or ten blocks over. No camera zone. Ghost it back. Cut through some yards. Break the trail. Get done like a split. Dynamite. I'll grab some gloves and a shower cap. <laughs> Whoa, hold your horses, buddy. I'm not doing it. You're well versed in the subject. You should do it. Fuck that. My black ass is gonna get spotted immediately, especially strolling around this rich white neighborhood. Yeah, right. Any excuse. You just don't want to do it. Of course I don't, Kimasabi. Fuck it. I'll go. One of you come with me, and we'll just look like a couple strolling home. All right, perfect. All right, you go. You guys look like an excellent couple. <laughs> you fucking with me? Oh, yes, it's great to go. That's 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 me going on. Nobody around here is gonna want to see a good-looking Italian girl hanging out with a big black man with dreadlocks. But call the cops on principle. Probably think I'm trying to kidnap her or something. All right, all right. Let's flip a coin and do odds or evens or something. Rocks, paper, scissors. <laughs> you kidding? All right. Okay. Perfect. I'll crash you then. Best two out of three. Fine. Let's do it, amigo. Oh my god, I'm gonna fuck you up. Ready? Rocks, paper, scissors, sh. Play poker. Blackjack? Baccarat? That game James Bond used to play? No, I don't play cards or gamble. What? You never had a knack for it? Some people got it. Some people do it all the time. I'm, I'm not one of those people. You see, tired. What happened? What you, you get laid since last time we talked? I don't know what else to tell you guys, okay? You keep asking me the same fucking questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Just like to know whose pocket you were signing. So, 
You don't play cards. You don't gamble? No. And I don't go to the Indian casinos or the rooms downtown. So, I call Red Ted Porter over at Lucky Jack's and ask him, Hey, do you know a crooked, dumb-looking white cop by the name of Danny Martin? What do you think he's going to say? I think he'll say, Danny who? But you could always call him anyway. I could, couldn't I? Department keeps you well versed on the families, huh? No, just the money makers. The Calvinos, the Morellos, the Badens, Galloways, Sinclairs. <laughs> well, you can knock the Badens off that list. <laughs> the whole kit and caboodle. Granted, somewhat accidentally, but good riddance to bad rubbish. Evil sons of bitches. Now, as uh, savage as the Badens were in their funny white hoods, they were still important types. And when big, bad, important types end up dead, well, people tend to break routine in order to get a jump on the changing market. For example, stopping by on a Saturday instead of the normal Look, Thursday. You guys are making this into something that it's not, okay? We called it a night, and then we hit up a bar for a few beers. And then I was gonna jump off the fucking tiramisu and see if Billy wanted to have a quick drink. Oh. oh, well, ain't that a nice thought. How long you been drinking buddies with the governor? Uh, off the top of my no, head. No, no, not off the top of your head. Try the middle behind the forehead where the brain is located. Try that part. Three years. And you don't gamble? I don't gamble. I don't play poker. <laughs> what's the what's the laugh for? Oh, uh, oh um, I just ooh, I uh, I noticed earlier. <laughs> yeah. I noticed earlier that you guys, you take your cues from the little girl. Hmm. You guys answer to the little Morello girl. Well, I think that's cute. Yeah. I think it's real fucking cute. Dude, I, I dare you go say that to her face. See how, see, just, just see how it works out for you. Hmm. You like sitting still? Good. Why don't you sit there and act like a handcuffed statue? We'll be back in a flash. Detective. He's painting himself into a corner. I say we give him two minutes. Then, go ahead. If he's got nothing new to say, then just drop him and start breaking it down. All right, let's do that. Try it alone. Five, ten minutes each, you then me, or me then you. Back and forth. Throw out a different series of questions, confuse him. No, that dog won't hunt. Two conditions, my friend. No noise, and an email. Oh, come on, if you're worried, I'll start without you. Then take the tools out of the room. I bet you I can get something in under ten minutes. Gentleman's bet. Bragging rights. Parents. Ten minutes. You. You're a head scratcher. I don't know what to make of you. I mean, I'm pretty convinced you're a little liar, liar, pants on fire. You know, I keep an ear to the ground, and I um, heard all the stories about your little uh, escapade on the north side of town. You and uh, you and another detective. You know that Bobby Lewis fella. You know, call me sensitive, but beating people the kingdom come just for throwing a bit of lip. Oh, sounds a bit over enthusiastic. I don't know, just my opinion. 
Now, my point is, you seem prone to deceptive criminal behavior. Vicious, greedy, uncreative. And you, my fine feather friend, I don't know what to make of you. So like I said, you're a goddamn head scratcher. I am confused and bewildered. Oh. I think I need a drink. The window is substantial. I mean, we could watch some Looney Tunes with the time we got. Getting a view on the outside system is going to give us a lot more breathing room. Did we end up getting the layout on the lights? We did. No simpler than we thought. The trees can cut them at 100 yards. Same with the motion. But we're going to switch them back on when we're clear. I bet you're all picturing that little red pouch. I'm picturing that insanely complicated safe, actually. So what do you think of the entry points? Looks like three good ones in total? From what I've read and what the markups look like. Yeah. No, the three on the first are prime. Anything else is going to be too much noise. There's two on each entry point. 14 stages all together. But it's all hunky-dory after the first nine, so we can move through nice and easy. And no collateral damage while the Badens are getting drunk on Martha's Vineyard. Well, there's still eight sluggers on security. And I hear that Baxter dude is a serious cat. I doubt the Badens are going to bat an eye for a couple of dead guards. Drop the van, pick up the second car in a no-camera zone, drive it to the safe house, and wait for the ride out. Yeah, the place needs to be off the books. A low-key type of area. So where's it going to be, Billy? We holding up in another basement of a massage parlor, or is it a strip club again? The safest and the most secure of all locations for this little dance number. My summer home on Leonard Street. Right, nice. Still a place where you meet up with your hookers, but we'll take it, do we? <laughs> yeah, prostitute jokes. I get it. All right, so out of Baden Hall at 11.20, then to Leonard Street. When's the pickup, and uh, more importantly, who? Who indeed? because I'm a bit less trusting, especially with our cargo. Well, I was going to surprise you later, but we got the bona fide exit strategy. For the safe ride out, you guys are getting, drum roll please, Big Gus. And he'll brief us in a minute. He's just over there at the bar. Yeah, kids, how you doing? It's an honor, sir. OK, thanks. So. Big Gus is going to take us out at 4.30 a.m. on the dot. No ifs, ands, or buts. I know it's a wait, but it's the only time he'll give you. Got no problem with that. I always thought Big Gus would have a Hawaiian shirt, and he does. Oh, it's awesome. All right, guys, moving on to the guards. It's in the packet marked Baden Hall Security. Couple hours before a pickup. Do you know who I am? You're Maddox Pryor. What have you heard about me? What's, uh, what's the word around the campfire? You mean other than working for a woman? Yeah, other than that. I know about hanging Bob Barclay, a headless Jane, and the Felix brothers. Those are the exaggerated ones. I mean, I might have hanged Barclay, but it wasn't in front of his family. And as far as Jane goes, the theatrics were all post-mortem and uh, well-deserved. But, uh, not the spooky monster hunting stories. Do, do you know anything substantial? Nothing. Here's a little something between you and me and the furniture. Most everyone I processed had no idea what had happened. And the few that did, well, they always had a fighting chance. I mean, it's the least I can do. Do you understand? Yeah. I think I do. I'll do something for you. I'll give you a fighting chance. 
if you promise to be as silent as the grave, I'll cut you loose. I'll cut you loose. And uh, if you can kill me, then you might just be able to get the drop on the others and save the day. Return home a battle-hardened hero. Happy ending. Fade out. I mean, to be honest, it's not going to end well. <laughs> wow. All right, that sounds really tough. And I like it. Huh. I like what you're saying. I really do. But you're not going to uncuff me. Because I'd kill you. And then I'd kill all your colorful friends. All right. people in this world that don't even have the luxury of owning a working television. You should donate yours then. God damn it, Hector, we're not talking about me. We're talking about a politician that doesn't even own a working television. Stay on track here. You think that I'm a You know, I just want to say, I don't think you guys are trying to give me high blood pressure, but uh, you're certainly not helping it any. To be honest, I think it's only good to hang out with you young people in moderation. Oh, come on. You're in the prime of your life, man. Don't want all the wrinkles, the out of shape body, and the gray hairs get you down. <laughs> Ooh, he's giving you the business. If you manage to stay sharp, it'll happen to you someday. All right. The situation at hand. We got two bodies to dispose of, a big platter of desserts to prepare, and big Gus coming to pick you little tykes up in less than two hours. Now, with everyone helping, this should be as easy as pie. First off, Hector, do you need help on any of the dishes? Uh, just show me where everything is, and I'll get started while you set the table. Perfecto. Vic? How many do you need for the breakdown? I'll take Patrice and Maddox. We're going to need more tarps. Jackson will help with the cleanup, too. Well, I, I didn't make the mess. Why do I have to clean it? What's that old Mexican adage? When the stars are out and the moon hangs low, do what I tell you, Jackson, or I'll put you through the fucking wall. Yep, got it. Got it. Huh? All right. We're not against the clock yet, so don't rush. Reconvene for desserts at 3.30.
shirts are done. Just gotta move some glasses to the table. Already unlocked this venue. It's probably in full swing right now. Yep. Without the big bad babies. Italian weddings go all night too. I don't like the idea of marriage, but I like weddings. Big party, a lot of dancing, a lot of girls. Be right back. Let me try Haley again. If you had to work in television, you wouldn't be all stressed out like this. Guys are obsessed. Shouldn't be calling us so much. Does not look good. No, but I think he's just concerned. He said she never does this. But you're right. Even if it's important or she's in danger, still too many calls. Seems very desperate. Yeah, needy. Or maybe he's just really bored. Well, that could be fixed with the working television. Now, if she finally calls back, what should he do to recover? Nothing, you didn't call too much. You just shouldn't answer. As the only woman, I can expertly solve this dilemma. No offense, Vic, but you ain't exactly the best example of a normal type woman. Valid point. Can I ask you something? We're not dating. Can't blame me now for trying. No. No. But I can beat the shit out of him or throw him down a flight of stairs. Uh, desserts are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll require the assistance of one of you unskilled chefs to bring some glasses to the table. Ooh. I'll do it. Okay. Oh. Did you make any of that famous blueberry cobbler? Oh yeah. Blueberry cobbler. I also made chocolate cookies, a devil's food cake, and an apple pie. God damn. Hector, this looks, looks so good. Choice stuff in here, man. Real professional. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get up here, get up here, please. Um, why don't we move these two first, huh? The cookies. The cookies! Okay. See, now is that hard to make? Is knocking. Hey, it's Detective Danny Martin. Came by to see Billy. Uh oh! Uh, just a minute, Detective. Be right down. Uh, take your time. There's no rush here. It's a fucking detective with a pastry box. Finish up with I've ever seen it. We should let him in. Detective, how are you doing tonight? Oh, let me guess. Uh, tiramisu? No, uh, rhubarb pie, actually. Ah. But, uh, sorry to drop by. Just stopping in to see the governor. Sorry, right. I didn't know I was interrupting a dinner party. Oh, no, 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 it's fine. It's not a dinner party, we're just celebrating. You can join us if you want to. Thanks, but I can't stay. Just wanted to give this to the governor and say hi. Danny Martin. Oh, I'm Hector, this is Patrice. Detective Martin, Patrice Cooper. The, the, sorry, the, the gov should be right out, he's just in the bathroom. Should be a minute. We just got back from painting the town red. <laughs> Very red indeed. Hey Patrice, why don't you show our new friend to the drinks while I set the rest of this thing? He must be thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Night's been real fun. Top notch. A couple of bars on Archer Ave, 
and a big party on Lion Street. So we figure the night's still young. Let's bring the party back here. Have some people over. You know what I'm saying? Oh, jeez, where are my manners? Meet my friends Maddox and Jackson. Guys, please uh, meet Detective Daniel Martin. How are you doing? Cheers. Have a seat, Detective. Take a load off. Uh, Danny, can I offer you some bourbon? Oh, nothing to drink for me, thanks. I can only stay a couple of minutes, press for time. Gotta get back to the missus. <laughs> the old ball and chain. <laughs> well, I feel like should be right out, I don't know. He is a popular guy, huh? So, it's just the guys out tonight, huh? Pretty much. Well, sort of. You got a friend of the female persuade you. Bit of a tomboy, actually. Yeah? Where is she at? Somewhere around here. I think she went to the basement for something. It's a nice pink pastry box. Thanks. My girlfriend owns a bakery. It's around here, actually. Oh, that's so nice. Hey, uh, Detective Martin, would you humor me for a second? I got a question for you. Well, I can get you out of some speeding tickets, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's nothing like that. Um, well, it's just that, well, earlier tonight, you know, after the big party, hmm. there were these two genuine article motherfuckers <laughs> that stopped by, and, you know, at first, I didn't believe them, but they were the real McCoy types. And, oh shit, this one of them, his name just happened to be Detective Daniel Martin. I'm doing hard. I have eyes on the hallway. Backstabbing dirty little bastard. I mean, Billy was always greedy, but this is a step up. This is clever. This is really fucking clever. A fucking snake in the grass. I'll shoot him while he's on the phone. He was trying to call this unlucky bastard and warn him about the situation he fucking just walked into. Probably trying to get him to change the cover before he got here. Yeah, he only started pretending to call that healing when the real cop showed up. So he made up excuse. He made up the whole fucking thing. He's a slippery old bastard. That's a good fucking excuse. A whoremonger calling one of his whores. I mean, it's smart. It's really fucking smart. It's, it's impressive. It's, it's almost perfect. I'm gonna grab him. Start getting shit together for waterboarding. Mm, wait, no, 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 not yet, not yet at least. I mean, gentlemen, I can only assume that between our five brains, there is an infinite amount of uh, techniques and methods that we could show off and demonstrate, but right now, consider the situation. All right, things aren't going too well for our good old governor. He remains unaware that his ace in the hole is dead in the closet. So while well, we're all on the same page, Oh, my lead. <laughs> Let's have some fun. <laughs> and that's if we're talking beaches. And I mean, um, clear blue water, palm trees, tropical birds types of beaches. I've never seen the Pacific, but uh, I bet it looks a lot like the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can travel, then travel. Don't take it for granted. I've been to Juarez, Mexico. <laughs> that's a landlocked city. That's not even close to another beaches. And is bordering El Paso. I had a fun vacation. Some places are better than others. Yeah, and almost every place is better than water. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Sicily once. Uh -huh. I mean, it was to negotiate a deal with my cousin, so I didn't really see much. Actually, I was in Canada for two days, but uh, don't remember much of it. Well, we all know the only cosmopolitans here are Hector and I. And, uh, I'll defer to his judgment on any worldly travels. Gracias, gracias. I, I think the best side of exploring is when you, when you go off the beaten path. You're bound to find somewhere you really like as long as you're willing to travel. And um, sooner or later, you're going to find a city or a country that will fit your requirement. 
For example, you were talking about islands and, and, and water. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have Maldives, beautiful, mm -hmm. Creed, Aquila, or countless others. But if you're into the opposite, Libya is 99% desert. Now, if you're looking for the most sexual country, Bingy, 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 bang. Um, I think that is Greece or Switzerland. Which one is it? Leave it up to preference or go to both. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, you could be more into the most populated city in the world, which I think now is Bangkok, Thailand. Or if you are more into uh, this kind of Outside wall for guard five. Hector holds position until I drop number four on south lawn and move to breach A. Then I hit five set breach point B. Wait for Jackson. Once A and B are primed, Patrice and I will bring the van around to the front, followed by Jackson with two and three's car. Exterior clear. Jackson in position to Hector on breach B. Patrice and I on C at the front. Maddox on A. All locked. Go live on signal Juliet. First three flashes. Maddox in the kitchen drops guard six, clearing office and the dining room. Second class. I got all the decorations set up and everything. Well, there's these two churches in Greece that celebrate Easter Sunday by shooting fireworks at each other. Well, what's that mean, though? <laughs> it means they celebrate Easter by shooting fireworks at each other. I think you're missing the point. You got some quality entertainment. You move in there, right down the street from them, and, and you watch it every year. Actually, actually, Billy and I, we were talking about retirement to the late detective Martin earlier in the living room, you know. Or to kick your feet up, the whole topic, right? I want to build a place somewhere real secluded, like a big stone gate, and then some like sand deafening walls. I could blow up whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. Maybe even like a like a secret entrance covered by a big rock, like a Batman's bat cave. If that happens, I don't care where it is, you're inviting me over. I don't think that is gonna happen. You know why? Well, Because we got a backstabber in our crew. This crazy sidewinder is fixing to betray us. Yeah, that's right. I heard your plan, mister, you twisted old son of a bitch. Dang it! You caught me. I was gonna run off in the pouch all to myself. That's right. After I'd been chained my fellow compadres, it is until you found out you're dangerous, little miss. Whoa! After you betray us. I see how it is. Yeah, I blast you guys. Meet my crazy dame and we ride off in the sunset. Ooh, romantic and dramatic. Yeah. Well, how's that gonna work? <laughs> Me and my gang had a plan. Get the horses, follow the ride out of town, and hit it there. And uh, hop a train to the mountains. Well, now, what? That was my idea, you slippery derisic. Except me and my gang of desperados were gonna hightail it down to Mexico. Impossible, <laughs> cabron! <laughs> I make my escape after you eat all the desserts I poison. <laughs> I think it'd be smarter to get a cop. Get someone to play a cop. I mean, imagine if uh, those two 
Detective Martin and the other one, Lewis. Imagine they came in here ready to rock. But they played it all casual. Now that would be a good surprise. That's pretty fucking brilliant. Yeah, it is true. And you could make it look like a visit. Mm. Actually, you only need one cop. Detective Martin, for example. Because then we'd just think he was coming by to see Billy or something. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I'm going to stick with yours. Looks like we might have a winner. Unless Billy can beat that. Yeah, Billy, what you got? Well, um, well, I'd have some uh, gunners bust down the door, and then I'd uh, head on down to uh, Florida. Mm. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not as good as the Detective Martin thing. Yeah, that's real polished. Oh, hey, running low again. Well, back to the watering hole. Oh, relax. Enjoy. I'll get another. No, no, it's fine. I'm not that old. I may be a little long in the tooth, but uh, I can still carry champagne. You tell him. Only as old as you feel, right? Exactly. I'm blessed and highly favored. Mm -hmm. Hey, Patrice, have you told them the pizza guy story? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's funny shit. All right, it's over. Chinese delivery, <laughs> like an ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. I like that name, too. Reggie Rock. Hey, Billy, you hear that story? Pizza guy cover? Rocco drew from Charlestown. Yeah, Patrice told me a while ago. Yeah, I wish a pizza place was open right now. <laughs> you know what I was thinking about? The, uh, what do you call them now? The newly deceased Badens. I mean, they may have been clan-loving savages, but they were a tough gang. I mean, they had some real heavy hitters. Amen to that. Salute. I mean, a few of them were real contenders. Mm. I guard Richardson. I learned John one Russell. I still can't believe how fast he was. <laughs> well, what I was thinking was, so the Badens go to their yacht club and uh, the drivers bring the cars back to the house. Well, then we show up and uh, lo and behold, the big surprise. Fact is, the Badens went to dinner and came back. No yacht trip across the waters, no uh, lavish wedding on Martha's Vineyard. So the way I see it is either they up and decided against going to the wedding at the last second, they didn't RSVP. Or hell, maybe they weren't even invited. What do you mean? Like the guest list, the RSVP, they weren't um, genuine. Not authentic, Dr. Big. But the uh, yacht club dinner reservations, what about them? I don't understand. I'm not talking about the dinner reservations. I'm talking about the wedding and, and that guest list. There's a single suspicion we must analyze, scrutinize, and examine. Because I gotta wonder, and I'm sure you do too, why someone would want to forge a guest list, an RSVP list, to a wedding. <laughs> I think you're barking up the wrong tree on that theory. Well, I think there's no fool like an old fool. You just insulted a governor. <laughs> I just insulted a governor. Now questioning one.
What's the deal, banana peel? You know, we don't mind shooting up the clan, but to be given false information, to be sent into the crossfire like that. Oh, geez, I don't know. Sounds to me like you had a plan. Stop. Stop this now. Take it and leave, and there'll be no reaction. No police, nothing at all. Well, no one can say you weren't funny. That was a very slow pull. Your face gave it away a long time before your hand even touched the gun. I pulled in defense. I only reached to stop the crazy shit that Vic was saying. I pulled in defense. You pulled in defense, and yeah, in a matter of speaking, it was defense. It was more of a, a preemptive shooting. Caught with your pants down. Listen, just untie me so we can talk like businessmen. Brilliant politician. I assume by now you already figured out that we met your slick-haired pal. Goddamn mercenary. But I bet you paid him a pretty penny for a five-man job, huh? Oops. <laughs> See, we were already suspicious. And I mean, your calls to, to Haley didn't help your case. And then this slick hair shows up, just put the final nail in the coffin. Gotta hand it to you, Billy. This cover? Genius. I would have thought it was the real one. Had damn near every angle covered. Almost every angle. <laughs> Those unexpected hazards of working in the field. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we wanted to watch you squirm a bit. We wanted to see how you'd hold up. And sure enough, you showed all your cards and you got yourself a little raspberry. Listen, nothing was going to happen to anybody. Nothing physical. Do you think he was meant to kill anybody? Come on, you're my team. I've known you all since you were pups. No one was going to be hurt. Oh, not hurt. Just robbed of what we earned. But you caught all the angles. You saw it coming. You guys, honestly, you're the best group of operators on the East Coast. Fuck, the whole country, north and south, and the whole two continents and then some. You guys have come a long way and you can go even further. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. I like that. You know what I think? I think I'm gonna cut your head off. Calm down. Don't be stupid. Out of all the things, you can't kill a governor. Just untie me and leave with the pouch. Billy, do you think we're gonna believe a fucking word you say? <laughs> His lips are moving, he's lying. If I die, you'll bleed for weeks. Do you understand the ramifications of even just threatening me, let alone what you're thinking of doing? It's very hard to throw your weight around when you're cuffed to a chair. I'll indulge you, Mr. Elected Official. Any power you had was from the state. It's uh, fucking municipal workers and courts. You got the government backing you. Congratulations. Now, if you look around the room for just a fucking second, you might notice the government ain't here. Just five fire-breathing sons of bitches that want to thank an old friend for being such a good host. I couldn't have said it better myself, Patrice. Duct tape, please. With pleasure. I'm just going to go ahead and apologize in advance for your beautiful summer home. Obviously, we're gonna have to burn it down. Fingerprints and such. Sorry. All right. <sighs> Governor Billy Donovan. First things first. I just wanna say... Yep, 4.30. Time flies, huh? Check this here. <laughs> He's here. Fucking dynamite. Hey, Gus. Ooh. Professional ambassador, you got awesome. him. Wait, you think, you think he can give us like 10 minutes? It's worth a shot. You go ahead and ask. 
My pleasure. Uh, wait. He, uh, he might need some convincing. Hey, Billy, don't you go anywhere. Ten minutes? Zero minutes, little buddy. Tell the team it's now or never. Five minutes. Yes. Got five oh. minutes. Woo! Fuck yeah! <laughs> Let's kick this off. Sorry. Hey, Patrice. I got a good idea you might like. It's very effective. I want your opinion on it. Well, after you, Doctor. This is very exciting. Very electric. <laughs> <laughs> That is uh, practically a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs>